Hello, lovelies here on Twitch. Hello, darlings over on YouTube. We're back playing Elden Ring. Uh, and I have a few things to say before we immediately begin playing. First of all, the first few hours of this game... <coughs> excuse me. First few hours of this game... I'd probably give it like a 7 or 8 out of 10. Probably an 8-ish out of 10 for the first 4, 5, 6 hours that I play. Because, I gotta be honest, generally speaking, I just don't care for open world. It's just not that interesting to me overall. Especially because I've played a good amount of open world games in my life. And that feeling of kind of wandering everywhere and having a little snip of an interesting interaction here, a little puzzle over here, something like this. I would describe those experiences as I did last week. It feels like watching 30-second cat videos for hours. That's what a lot of open world games feel like to me. And so when I first opened up the gates to the lands between and looked out into this landscape and started to wander around, I had that very kind of open worldy, like, eh, feeling. Darn. But I had Souls-like combat. I found some really cool dungeons. I enjoyed that. And then, it was during my second day playthrough, I started to do a pattern that I've never really felt before in a Dark Souls game or in an open world game. I hit Margit the Fell Omen, which is a battle right here. Woo, Stormvale Castle. I went through through this fight against Margit the Fell Omen, and I played against Margit a little bit. And just went, fuck it. And then I went all the way down here and explored this full area and got to this um, forlorn hound ever jail beat the dude here. I wandered up this a little bit, and I kind of want to explore this next, but then I went and wandered around in this area. Not too much, but then I got I got curious. I said, can I cross over this way? And then I found this broken bridge, crawled up here, climbed all the way through a bunch of stuff, and then wound up looking over this huge landscape and actually got to this Yernia Highway South, which then makes me go, wait, is there more north stuff up this way? That's sick. So as I did that, I then went, you know what, let me come back and let me play against Margaret the Fell Omen. So in other words, when I would play games like Dark Souls and Bloodborne, and I would get to a boss and I was unable to defeat the boss, the game would go, fuck you, beat the boss. And I would just keep smashing my head against the game. But if I didn't want to, I would quit playing. Many of you literally saw me do this with The Orphan of Kos, where I went, I'm just going to stop playing, we're going to play Magic. I literally just switched games because I, I wasn't in the mood for it. But I'm starting to really feel the brilliancy of having extremely challenging segments and extremely tightly designed areas that you can just go, yeah, you know, nah, I'm not really into that. I'm not really into that. I'm going to do something else. So then we beat Margaret the Fell about halfway through day two and then went through Stormvale Castle, which thus far has been my favorite part of the game. Why? Because it's basically very Dark Soulsy. It's a really tightly designed dungeon. There's all these interesting... Um, spaces to look at and explore. I can see locations to drop down. Ooh, Kukri. Kukri. And so I'm getting a lot of these exploratory joys that again feel very soulsy to me. Well, I guess the only way to go is down. I'm getting these exploratory experiences that honestly do not really feel very soulsy. Feels very open worldy. But then I'm getting a lot of these soulsy moments, and now I'm in this soulsy dungeon. Ah, nice to meet you. The pleasure's mine. Roger is the name. Roger. A sorcerer, as uh, you might have guessed. I'm looking for a little something here in the castle. When I'm not hot-footing it from the troops, that is. But enough about me. What are you doing here in Stormvale Castle? This place is bristling with tarnished hunters, you know? They sacrifice our kind for grafting. Time to be no, exactly really careful about my right trigger. A purpose in mind. I didn't realize what I was here for, but I'm here to defeat Godric, everybody. <laughs> the, um... Um, oh crap, I had something I wanted to say. Um, 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 um. Yeah, I'll open up my inventory in a quick second here. Um, can I actually do this while we're in the fight? Or while we're in the conversation? Looks like no. Um, damn, I had something I wanted to say. Oh, well. I see. Here to challenge Godric and lay your hands upon a great rune, are you? You can see it then, I take it. 
the guidance of grace. Well, enjoy it while you can. I'm tarnished, like you. But unlike you, I've seen neither hide nor hair of this guidance for the longest time. Still, I won't forget how it felt when I first came here, to the lands between. I'm privy to a few magical battle arts. Magical battle arts. Learn one. As sure. A tarnished, once guided by grace, I'd love to help you out, if it please. It pleases me. Well, let's learn the skills. All right. Spinning weapon. Usable on swords. And I actually have enough for this. I might get this. Let's do carrying greatsword, huh? What do we think this does? So if I now go to my... My equipment's pretty basic. I have a longsword plus two. I have a warhawk's talon just because it was fun to equip. Uh, I'm, I'm rocking a lot of knight things. Uh, my, my wish is to have a, a, a bazillion poise. I love poise. I love being an absolute indestructible poisey boy. We got this extra uh, talisman slot from killing Margit the Fell. We're all in on uh, crimson flasks. I have some fire arrows, some St. Trina arrows, different bolts that I don't really care that much about. Here. Come on over. My cat's very excited. Very, very excited to see us. So I think I need to use that uh, the war ashes way back out here. I think I need to go back to the Church of Ella to use it. All right. But that's going to be a ridiculously tough fight. Those knights are no joke, man. These ones, on the other hand, are a joke. I walked up to them and I wanted to see if there was like a little like, oh, hey, talk. Uninvited guest says, is it just me or are shield slash guarding totally not great against bosses in this game? It seems like dodging is the only answer. I, I have felt a mix. I have felt a mix. It feels very balanced. And I'll be real. I went heavy shields in uh, Dark Souls 1. Dude, like, it, I just like did this and just like whacked away at bosses. <laughs> like never took damage. It was a little unfair. I felt proper busted. Craig Penguin says, Hello, Sean. What's your opinion on using summons during boss fights? You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Oops. I'm not going to do it. Because I like that feeling of learning and improving slowly and getting better and better. And I'm... It's, it's pretty... It's pretty freaking hard to frustrate me. Unless, of course, you're backseating me. Chronic Penguins, I'm having trouble deciding if I want to use them or not. I mean, like, you can always use them. And then come back later and be like, ah. I did a second save where I didn't use any. Let's see if I can bait just the one. Alright, something's happening here. Okay, I was totally stunlocked. <laughs> These guys are tough. Are tough. That's good. We have a death. We have a death. Vel run with our little death tracker. Mm -hmm. So we're planning on playing... I remember what it was now. We're planning on playing Elden Ring for, like, the week. 
but it'll it'll depend a little bit on what the viewership is like. No, no, no summoning pool is functional. It'll depend on what the viewership's like, because, for instance, I have 3,500 or so viewers, and then within 20 minutes of uh, Elden Ring being accessible, it plummeted. <laughs> In fact, someone posted like, hey everyone, hey everyone, the servers are open, you can play Elden Ring now, you can play Elden Ring now. Like 400 people disappeared immediately. <laughs> and I know when there's a lot of big release games, a lot of people will see the big release games and want to experience it themselves. So I remember that happened with God of War on PC. There are people that tuned in and were like, oh, hey, I never got the chance to play this, so you're playing it. Just want to say, I hope you have a good day, and I won't be watching so I don't get spoiled. Like, all the time. And so, um... The Souls games have been a really interesting um, sort of exception to this rule. Where the Souls games, a lot of times people watch it because they want to see someone's experience of playing against this boss or the other boss. Oh my god, if I die to this fucking bird... Not an issue. I was never scared. I was never scared. Yeah, Souls games have long been a bit of an exception to that rule of single uh, single player games generally having lower viewership than um, other titles. For actually, most broadcasters fall into that category, um, with, with obviously some notable exceptions. We'll come back to those later. Generally speaking, it's just it's just worth worse viewership. But the Souls games have been an exception because people want to see, you know, someone trying to make their way through Blighttown. It's fun to just watch someone accidentally fall off a cliff in Blighttown. It's, it's hilarious. Watching someone get through another poison swamp in Demon's Souls. It's hilarious. So I, I wonder if that bird that's up there that I hit last time comes at me here. Maybe not. Yeah, so th these games have been a bit of an exception. So, like, there's a lot of really great games out right now. And currently, I want to just play Elden Ring. That's what I want to do, like, in my free time. Um, and also, I want to play Magic the Gathering. I forgot that it was March 1st today, and I almost hit Mythic with my homebrew token control list. Fine to remind you that you have a jump button. Yeah, sure. You mean like this? We've been jumping. I know how to jump. I'm a jumping boy. I need to just get good enough against these knights. And also, like, there's a lot of people that play um, Dark Souls notably differently from other games, where... They will use wikis a lot more. They will watch people and try to get strategies a lot more. Because even if I told you exactly what to do in these games... Perfect. Even if I told you exactly what to do, it's still hard. So I can stagger this. Oh. Holy fuck. Oh! Oh my god, that is so much. Okay, alright. You know what, that's on me. That's on me. Is there any way that I can jump over to this early on? No, I really do have to go all the way past these birds of the day, huh? <laughs> Oh, 
98 souls. Let's see if I can get just one. Now. Fuck me. Alright, making a run for it. Getting the fuck out of here, man. Oh, I see. And because there's an outside, it's hard for me to avoid them. <laughs> oh, are these little bastards chasing me all the way in here? Temporarily boost poise. This is the one that's actually giving me. My poise is. Where's my poise on the screen? 36, yeah. This, this is the blessing, right? That, like, if I use it. I remember someone saying on Twitter that if you see that little reduced health button. It's because you have the Baldekin's Blessing. The Red Square debuff is a 5% health debuff. Oh, shit. Oh, well, there's no making a run for it, huh? Griflar says, have I done much outside of Limgrave? This is what I've done. I've pretty much been in this area. I have not explored up here. Actually, at all yet. Oh, shit. Um... Holy shit. Oh my god, can my friend help me? Oh shit. Oh! No, I had my sword open. Hold your fucking shield. Wait, wait, wait. Why is my shield not being held? Wait, 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 wait. My L1 button is not working. The the whole button is not working. Wait, 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 wait. What what is going on? I literally I'm I my button is not doing stuff. Did I break it? Oh, season pyromancer says you're in an anti-attack area. You're in a non-aggressive zone. Wait a minute. Did Dark Souls? Did they just go, you know what, being able to kill NPCs that are needed to beat the game? Let's make sure players can't do that. Oh, look, my buttons work. Yeah, someone should tell that to the baddie. Dude, and I'm getting no fucking practice at all. Like, I have no idea what the patterns to this fucker are. So let's see, if I then, let's see if we can do this. So I hold the triangle and then I hit the up. Wait, no. How do I equip, oh, I don't give a shit, screw bows. Oh, I thought I'd hit him. Stamina build. Healing! 
bird is tough. This is a tough, tough bird. The orb above your left HUD means you can't attack. Well, all right. Can I, like, land here? And then can I fall? Sick. Oh, dude, day nine. Absolute gamer. Yeah, look at it. Look at the little orb. I can't do nothing here. So if I kill Godric, I get a great rune. And I assume great runes are like Lord Souls. I might just run past this idiot. You know what? So now he's gonna dash, huh? And he's still gonna hit me. Okay. Stamina. Oh fuck. Okay, okay, okay. I got him. 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 Okay, 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 okay. I, I learned it. I learned the thing on accident. But I was out of stamina because I blocked. Well, I swung at him when he was on the ground. Rhythm Teacher says this game is only fun to watch when death happens. <laughs> you little sadists. So to share a really weird opinion, I actually think there's a lot of these like really base emotions that people have that are unhealthy in modern society. Like super, super unhealthy. But that media can really, really satiate, you know? And you know, like, like, watching a jerk in a, in a movie fail, or watching your pal Day9 fail in the game. Oh my God, this bird's... This bird fucking plays Dark Souls. Holy shit. I, you know, I think that, like, laughing at someone else's misfortune in a game, it's, like, really safe. It's, like, a safe outlet for that sort of weird base emotion. Rider Guitar says I'm in this exact spot right now on my PS5. Oh, my God. This game is so good. Yeah. I, I, uh, inadvertently excluded this when I was talking. Oh, I'm so robust. When I was talking last time. But I, I truly think that my viewership dropped on Thursday and Friday when I was playing. But already, I think that my viewership is going to surpass where it was on Friday, which is very rare for most games. But what I think happened is that because I played for about 10, 12 hours on Thursday and Friday, a lot of people played for 10, 12 hours on Saturday, Sunday. And then maybe a little more on Friday night, a little more on Monday night, you know, something in that time frame. Holy fuck. And I think that now I am in a situation where... Fuck! I think I'm in a situation now where a lot of people are past this location. Fuck me. I'm stuck. Alright, yeah. A lot of people are past me, so they're tuning in seeing where I am at and going, oh, I remember this part. Getting that Soulsy experience. I just think I can do this. Just power up this a little bit. Boop. Oh, so it doesn't really do anything. That's this area over here. 
Right. Also, dude, there is nowhere in this game right now can I actually buy smithing stone once. Yeah, if you're past the area, you're allowed to watch. Resident Evil says, shit, I love watching these. And, oh, well, your, your comment scrolled past, and I can't look at it. I wanted to read a Resident Teacher, but no dice. Oh my god, guard counter is fucking strong. Resident Teacher says! Love watching these full playthroughs of games like these, especially with Day 9, due to his nature of making it enjoyable. Was always waiting for the Dark Souls 3 finish. You know what, I I mean, if, if viewership stays good, all other games can go fuck themselves, man. I'm gonna play Elden Ring. <laughs> Anagram says, I watched YouTube vids, and so now I have more time, so I'm here. Good to have you here, Anagram. Look at that. There's construction going on in the area. I mean, there's kind of always construction going on in the area of uh, Los Angeles. There's a lot of developments happening right now. But, like, occasionally one of the construction sites will have that huge, like, dukong. I need to be really careful to make sure my stamina meter is appropriately high. That noise, that gong, means that they've been they've been broken. So they're just gonna like oh like fall down. Spicy says, "What's your thoughts on the soundtrack so far?" I don't like the ambient music that much. I don't like it that much. I, I wish that it weren't. You know what I mean? I wish it weren't. Yeah, because, like, um, there's there's certain times when you stab someone and they go, like, ugh, and they actually get, like, staggered. But, like, there's... I don't know what the name of the status effect is, but it's, like, it it, it breaks them. Where that guy... You, you heard that goo, where you saw him, like, hunch over. That happens sometimes if you've dealt enough damage to an enemy in a small period of time. It can also happen if you hit them in certain spots, like with the giants when they're bent forward. Oh. Oh. Huh. Okay. It's taking the permanent nap. So this is the entrance, so it doesn't look like there's anything that notable except this room. Nice little fire. That is the most Souls experience ever. I've already fought one of you. What in the shit is this? Alright, at least I can't accidentally roll through that. Where are we? Uh, 
Oh, disgusting. All right. All right, let's go over here. Oh my god, it's the first time I'm actually opting into stealth. Oh my god. Oh my god, what's happening? What's happening to me? What's happening to me? Isn't the creature you died to at the start of the beginning of the game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, uh, this is a giant. So let's see. So there's the entrance down there, right? Yeah. Shit. Try to sneak up on him. Try to sneak up on him, damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Those halberdiers are a little easier than the um, sword shieldy boys. Guard response over here. What a bad bird. Oh, that's way easier. So many birds down. Yeah, th this game has really grown on me. One once I got to Stormvale Castle, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, it's tra traditional Souls zone design." I was just like, "Oh my god, awesome!" When I started to be able to explore instead of banging my head against the wall, I was like, "Oh, oh my god, it's incredible." Superfluxus says, hey, Day9, did you get to catch any of the SC2 Katowice coverage? Yeah, I caught a good amount. I actually haven't even seen the finals, unfortunately. I didn't watch any of the final morning because I slept in crazy, crazy hard. And then um, I watched Hero Marine. Hero Marine, I think, played brilliantly. Hero Marine streams a ton as well. Oh shit, I have no fucking poise. I have no poise. Oh, fuck this asshole. I need to immediately back up. Oh, that sucks. I didn't lose that many souls though. I maybe lost like 1800. Yeah, the Katowice game, game was great. I thought it was, what's Poise that you keep talking about? Poise is a stat in Dark Souls. Which, notice that when I get hit here... See how I, I, I stagger like that? That, like, ugh. Where I'm, like, unable to control and I have to go, oh, God. That That is when your Poise is broken. And so, if I get uh, various armor and equipment, 
that increases my poise. So yeah, if my poise is, is increased, then I can withstand blows and not lose control of my character. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure every series in the playoffs was incredible, except maybe for the Dark Trap series. Well, you know. I'm actually worried about the fact that... Well, I mean, I, I, I voiced this. I voiced this constantly, but I'll never stop voicing it. If we could just get a StarCraft II patch so that I actually have a reason to pay attention for the first, like, ten minutes of the game. <laughs> like, ZVT and ZVP, man. Oh my god. You're not gonna believe this. This Zerg player went for two hatch, got Zergling speed and pulled him off gas, and then is now getting a third hatch. Uh, it's unbelievable. Unthinkable. Wait a minute. Are we seeing a Protoss player get Void Race? They defend a third? I never would have thought. Like, I mean, kill me, man. Alright. So I need to be careful and... What the fuck? You're supposed to be like, oh my god. Faster taking out these birds. Alright, that's not it. What was the spell thing you got from Rogier? It is, it's a war ash. So I need to go back to the Ella. Be like, yo, Ella, give me my ashes. Or wait, can I do it at the. Maybe I can actually do it at the bonfire. I. I can't quite remember which one is regular um, bonfires versus versus uh, Ella, but I'll check that after I go back. Took out that eagle. Ah! Oh, it's called a posture break? I mean, that makes sense. I can never remember the names of these things. It's like, oh, this is actually, this is not a critical. This is a visceral attack, you know? FromSoft is like, oh, let's do the same thing but call something fucking different. I don't even appreciate that they called them runes in this game. They're souls. All right, they're souls. They're going to release another version that's going to be in the Wild West, where you still are using swords and shields and armor that goes clickety-clunch. But they're not going to call it... Please. They're not going to call it that anymore. They're going to call it gumption. Oh, well, it looks like I just lost 1,800 gumption. They're fucking souls, okay? I need to stay mid distance. Regain poise. Or, excuse me, stamina. Oh, fuck. It's, his, it's when he's in a windy boy attack mood. Thank god the game was like. 
I rolled at the correct time. Holy boys breaking Jesus. This guy's fucking hard. Can we can we get him on the targeting? Holy fuck. Oh. Oh. Oh, I'm so lucky. Oh my god. Oh. 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 I forgot about this. And this is... Oh, that's right. By the way, uh, a super pro gamer, I'm a veteran Souls player uh, kind of technique. If you just hold the run button, you do this. Thanks so much, Dark Souls 2. Coach Khan says, can I just say how much I love that you can have so much trouble on one random mob in the game? So good. Oh, dude. Oh, yeah. This is the game. Bye. How do you think we get up to the other room on that side. All right. So I can also drop down to the feast pit. Enter in from that way, huh? Maybe I will have to drop down there later on. Oh, shit. Wait. Hold on one second, my landlord just messaged me. Lord texted me something about rent. I'm like, it's the first. Don't I pay you today? <laughs> All right. All right. Let's see if we can do this. What is this? I got completely confused. My landlord said the owners raided the rent. It's on your door. And I was like, what? Their phone auto-corrected raided to raised. So I'm like, oh, okay. If they just raised the rent, yeah, it's fucking normal. <laughs> like, okay. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's, that's, that, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, they, they raided the rent? It has been, there was a raid on it? Oh my god, like, did our money get stolen? Yeah, welcome to 2022, yep. Yep. Now time to back away and let him come to me. Oh, 
roll, you fuck. Holy fuck. Oh fuck, I missed the time. Nice. Oh, okay. Let's take a sip. Oh god, it's Dark Souls, isn't it? I see a chest and I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't know, it's a chest. I don't know. Ah. Uh. Mimics fail? Oh, that's gonna be so cruel in PvP. That's going to be so cruel in PvP. Is that a regular person? Oh, shit. Go down first. Huh, who is this asshole? Yeah, who's who's Crablar? Who's Crablar? We serious with this shit? Sweetheart. Oh, dude, that sneeze was a powerful sneeze. Sneeze was a huge ass sneeze. Hey, kitten. Top level says we'll never get sick of you, Day 9. Pound those positive vibes. Oh, vibes. Now, is this a boss or is this just a fucking guy? I mean, this is a very bossy looking sort of arena, you know? How many souls do I have? Not not a lot. Alright. Holy shit, that's gonna be some serious hits. No fucking nothing. Okay. You know what? I'm out. I don't I don't even care. Yeah, yeah, crab boy. You know, I'm I'm willing to not know. I'm willing. So where where are we? Right. Mr. Gray Screen, um, I'm gonna give you a timeout for ten minutes for spoiling uh, the solution for me. Alright. Uh, let's 
go here. Let's equip torch. Come on, I'm on heavy load, so I'm gonna unequip this. I'm on medium load again. Uh, DG Devastation, I'm doing strength dex right now, but to be honest, stamina is like my favorite stat to have. I want to be a thick, tanky, poisy boy. I see, so this. Oh, hi. Oh, oh my gosh. So, because here, here's the thing that I'm remembering that also um, our friend, who may not have been doing it intentionally, but uh, Mr. Grayscreen just spoiled for us. Remember this elevator that we walked up and it wasn't working? We're now back to the ground floor. Um, and so there's been this question, where's the relink to here and where's the relink to here? Now, I've been aware of this, and this has been on the mind, so it's not really as egregious of a comment from Mr. Grayscreen. Um, but... Um, still, I'm trying to figure out how to either get to these front gates and open this up, or how to get back here. And I don't think I'm going to live if I go out. I can get back over here real fast. Because I'm close to death. I can't look at the map right now. Where does that link to? Oh, bugger off. There we go. Now, now I'm far enough away that this will not... that I can open up my map again. Because if the dude is aggroed to me... So if I look this way, now we're facing... The elevator. Shit, is that just the elevator right there? Is that where it is? <laughs> Ooh, that's cruel. Ooh, that's dirty. Yeah, because there's the tower. Yeah, so I guess that's... How many little dudes are down here? I count two. Chrysalid's memento. Lump of flesh. <laughs> Mamma mia. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We did it. Where, where are we right now? And what if I... This just goes all the way back down again. So this is not 
quite all the way back up. Nice. We're gonna go ahead and untime out Mr. Gray screen. There you go. There you go. There you go. All right. Nice. It's actually uh, one of the two elevators that we're thinking of. So let's do Ashes of War. wonder what this is. Mr. Grayson says, I just didn't want Sean to suffer anymore. Well, here's how I'll frame it. Here's how I'll frame it, Mr. Grayscreen. First of all, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We're doing lots of timeouts, not because there's lots of evil, shitty people here. We're doing timeouts as a form of communication to sort of let people know. It, it, it's, it's, again, the idea that we like to be more active as opposed to reactive uh, in a little gaming space. A little streaming space. Um, but the... Um, a moral zombie. Um, check with a mod. Don't just say it to me because it could be you. Uh, could be you. Give me one quick second. I need to respond to something really fast here. All right. So, um, yeah, the, the way that we like to think of it... Oh, this gives intelligence scaling? Oh, no. I, I want it to have the regular... Oh, this actually lets it scale a little better, huh? Looks like it does less, actually, all. Alright, I guess I don't want this. Damn. Yep, yeah, um, 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 The idea of, hey, I want to stop Sean from suffering, in a way, I would describe that as what we want is for me to experience the fun and joy of the game. And a lot of times in games that is being stuck, that is suffering a little bit. And the comparison I always make is that if I'm stuck on a crossword puzzle, and you pick it up, fill everything out, and hand it back to me, and go, oh, you want to make sure you weren't suffering there. Like, the point of me playing this game is the getting lost, is the trying to find my way through, is the dying against the enemy multiple times, and then figuring out the way. All right, let me see if I can take down Crablar. I don't know if this is going to be like a... Um, permanent mob, or whether it's going to be one of these. Oh, shit. Whether this is one of these, you kill it and then it's dead forever. We do appreciate the enthusiasm. I get it, Mr. Gray Screen. It's kind of funny. It's 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 interesting. It's like um, I actually have a really rough time with this when I watch people play Brood War, because there's things where I'm watching and I'm like, you gotta change the positioning of that zealot at that ramp. You you need to change the positioning of that zealot. You need it. You need to change. You need. To, oh my God, they're not changing it. They're not changing the positioning. Oh Jesus. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm just, like, watching. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> uh, let's go to the inventory. And then all of a sudden, a bunch of Zerglings stream up their ramp, and they're like, oh, man, there was no way to hold that off. And I'm like, no! Nah! But the thing is that, like, I'm increasingly of the opinion, we need to create an intermediary. Golden Rune, you selected. One, two, three, four, five... Like we 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 need a, we need a different method, some sort of tweener, not tweener method, in betweener method. Dude, I am so glad viewership is good right now. I am like over the moon. Yeah, I'm gonna be an endurful boy. 
Did Devastation says, do you intend on using the co-op signs? I'd have to play for PS Plus, and I'm not doing that. Mr. Grayscreen gifted five. Oh, God, Mr. Grayscreen, I hope you don't feel, like, obligated to give support to the channel because I gave you a time out. I mean, we, we appreciate the five subs, as it literally is our income source. Leech is back. Is that a curiosity why PS5 and not PC? Very simple. Um, PlayStation 5 is an incredibly predictable piece of hardware, so typically it is incredibly straightforward to do improvement work for a PS5, where that is not necessarily the case for a PC. By the way, I want to know the difference between easy versus straightforward. Straightforward is like Huh. We're having an issue with the buffering in this area. And then you just fix it. Uh, so with PS5... I knew that probably they got it to a point where it was good on the PC. Oh, this fucking guy. Or excuse me, they, they probably got it to a, uh, a good point on the... Uh, Jesus, they probably got to the point where it was good on the PS5, so I was like, may as well just play it on the PS5. Because with PCs, there's a lot of unpredictability. Not just... I didn't hear no horn. Fuck oh, you. Right back. Oh, it's broken. Yeah, there's a lot more unpredictability on the PC. Like, for instance, even though this is my gaming PC and I do streaming on that PC, I'm still assembling visual components for the stream on this computer and then piping them over to my streaming PC. And then the streaming PC is actually doing the encoding. So little things like that, like I have chat open on this PC, I have my um, other little graphics module nodule things over here on this PC, I have my Discord open on this PC, which is... Honestly, pretty, pretty light on the, uh, you know, processing difficulty front, but it's still non-zero, right? Whereas on a PlayStation, again, it's in much more predictable to develop for. So that's why I chose to just get it on the PS5. that guy was going to be stuck to his little area for a little bit. 30 FPS on PS5. I, uninvited, I'd say I'm getting between 45 and 60 pretty much always. And I mean, if we're being really honest, man, like, I, I'm not like a super high fidelity gamer. I mean, like, my favorite games are like Stardew Valley, Starcraft 1, Fallout 1, Factorio. <laughs> These are games that are just not super high frame rate kind of like 3D rendering environment kind of games. That is a, that's a boy right there. A cheesy Bob says that I figure out some of the mechanics that are introduced in the tutorial. I actually found the tutorial and we, we learned that there is no, there's nothing that we were like, what? Oh, totally surprised me. Oh wait, what? There's a path here. Nice. Oh shit, there's a guy. Ooh, a pike. Mushroom. Exile armor. This is some spectacular environmental storytelling, man. Make sure 
didn't miss anything over here. You know, it's also so nice with this game, with the pace of it. I can just take time and just halt for a little bit. Chat, wander around. Dude, is this not some stunning environmental storytelling? Something was coming out this way that people did not want coming out this way, you know what I mean? So, oh, let's see. So, if this is the way we're facing, there's something over here that they were a little frightened by. Now, should I head this way back towards this entrance? Maybe that's the right way to go. There's also this other path back here that I'm curious about as well. Tika says, can you explain what you mean by environmental storytelling? Sure, there, there's, uh, there's like verbal storytelling, dialogue storytelling, where you talk to someone and they're like, 300 years ago when Stormvale Castle was denied a bank loan, and you go, oh shit, these people fucking also deal with bank loans. They have a corrupt system as well. <laughs> That's the dialogue telling the story. But here, you have all of these turrets pointed this way, at this exit, which makes you go... What, what were they trying to defend against? What was going on there? Wow, there's some sort of terrible threat that was coming in from that direction. And that is... Let's see. I want to go... Yeah, this is what I want to go. And the, what's going on in the environment presents information about what could be going on story-wise. So, uh, other examples of this... Um, in... Um, there's environmental storytelling that's done sort of in the periphery. Let me actually just do a quick change here. Just. Move these cables around. Let me get this over here. There's environmental storytelling that's done in the periphery, which might be something, you know, like if you're in an open world game, you know, and there's a poster that's like up here in this. Oh, yeah, I forget. I can actually use my mouse on the screen. Yeah, there's like a poster up here that's just like vote against dragons. Right. And that's that's the environmental storytelling that's kind of on the periphery. It makes you go, oh, there's prejudice against dragons in this place. Oh, interesting. But then there is. Um, environmental storytelling that's connected to the game, which would be something like um, in in Dark Souls, there is somewhat like the whole theme of Dark Souls is that there is the dying flame representing the dying kingdom that's there. And it's, it's very literally like when the fire extinguishes, people have lost themselves and returned back to being sort of withered husks. Um, and so this entire kingdom is trying to continuously replenish the flame or, or reignite the flame in some way. Um, and this witch tries to create an endless fire and accidentally creates endless lava. So you're in this area that has been flooded by lava and the entire environment is a, is a result of that event. And like, it doesn't tell you this. It's not like you walk in there and it's like, Hey, what's up? Welcome. I'm really excited uh, to have you here. Oh, shit. There's a lot of them. Oh, can we, can we, can we be a better, a better targeter, please? Yeah, I think that, like... Oh, my God. Fuck me. It's the fact that there's three of them at once.
And it's not like when you enter into that area is the game like, Hey, you, pay attention. I want to tell you why the lava's here. You know, but it's like you just get this... You get this sort of mood and feel. You get this sort of like, Oh my gosh, look at all of these structures that clearly didn't... They weren't built around the lava. It looks flooded by the lava. Like, that's really cool. Can I traverse this? Wait. Do I have enough? Cool. And, uh, you know, I think that the... the, the God Slayer's seal. What is that? What is... Is a God Slayer seal? Is it an item? Is it a weapon? Is it a talisman? Boosts God Slayer incantations. Oh, Faith Twenty Seven. Oh, get out of here! Get out of here! So I think that like one of the one of the first really famous examples of an environmental storytelling heavy game was Fallout 3. And when I say, like, famous example of it, I want to be clear, I'm not saying it's like, it was the first one to do it, but it, it's it's a sort of modern reference for a lot of modern open world games. Where Fallout 3 is an apocalypse. So it's trying to tell stories of long past apocalypses. What do you know? It's the game. You know, it's trying to tell the story of long past, you know, uh, events. It's also trying to tell stories of, like, people who were trying to survive but didn't make it. And it just creates a really interesting, literal landscape. It is very interesting to wander around and you look and, like, you know, there's a corpse next to a bicycle. And there's, or, or uh, next to a motorcycle. And there's, like, some ramps. And there's an explosion somewhere. And you're like, oh, someone tried to do a motorcycle trick in the apocalypse and missed. I got it. <laughs> so, I mean, like, the... the um, Games like Fallout... So, I, I believe that I do want to drop down this way. Yeah. Games like Fallout 3 were, like, real sort of benchmarks for a lot of people with their own designs. Like, are we actually doing this as well as Fallout 3? Because it's really easy to wind up in a situation where your open world game is... It, it's so easy to tell stories and to convey information through dialogue that it's easy to overload that. It's really easy to be like, and then you talk to the mayor, and the mayor informs you how hard it's been to get supplies through here. Okay. Like in the middle of swinging the sword, it's like, did you know that you can do all sorts of cool incantations and shit? Just like, all right, man. Oh, shit. It's so easy to just, like, the mayor will say this, and then there will be a quest icon that appears here, and then you go there, that, like... You start becoming so caught up in the UI and the list, you stop looking at the environment around you. And so I really think that uh, Dark Souls, due to the fact that it's... Due to the fact that the game is so spare with its UI UX, and I'm talking about the first Dark Souls game and not necessarily Elden Ring. It's so spare in that regard that the only cues you have is the environment around you, and then they played into that by, like, really making it very, very, very rich to look through. And also, Maddie Inc. gifted the fully brandable nine subs. Oh, my God, Maddie Inc. Warm thank you to you. Maddie Inc. says, thanks for providing me much entertainment all these years, but especially the past two. Keep on keeping on. Pleases me greatly to hear. Last two years have been trash in terms of just feeling like a happy person. A lot of good things happen. 
lot of things that just kind of led to me being generally kind of stressed all the time also happened. Oops. Falcon says, dude, why are Smithing Stone one of the rarest thing in any Souls game ever? I know, tell me about it. Snong says, could we consider the curse of Monkey Island for mostly walking? Wish you guys had a suggestion box. Oh, yeah, no, the suggestion box is right here. You're doing the right thing. Uh, but we did Secret of Monkey Island, which I believe is the first one, and the Curse of Monkey Island, I think maybe is the second one. Ah, yes, classic stealth game. Quickly, take to the high ground, which is secretly a disadvantage. Baja Blast, Monkey Island. <laughs> Shit. Sorry. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I didn't have any flasks. Alright, well, I was gonna say. Goodness, we're gonna need to work through a lot of stuff. Curse is the painted style third one. I think people get turned off by the style. Maybe that's just really top not has really top notch writing. That's good to hear. Aegis Ran says, "How well does environmental storytelling correlate with great set pieces like in Halo?" Yeah, so I mean, the the, the description that I've heard consistently is that there's a difference. It, it, it's kind of about the purpose of what... Okay, so so all your mechanics in games and all the components, like they're what are going on in the environment and the story, can have different uh, uses. So for instance, um, a really... Uh, a boss fight in a game like God of War might be more about the spectacle, about, oh my gosh, look at how crazy cool we can make this. Look at how ridiculous um, you know, th this enemy can be. I'm running. I'm running. Ah! Ah! Scared the shit out of me. Get the fuck in there. Ah. It can be about spectacle, or it can be about challenge. Or it can be about um, actual use, you know? Like, uh, uh, what a unit does in StarCraft is mainly about its use and function. Oh, God. Whereas, you know, in, in something like... Uh, Total War Warhammer 3. It, you're not really meant to do much, or hell, even in StarCraft single player. You're really kind of meant to just enjoy the experience of building some stuff. Holy shit, guys. Oh my god, that was so hard. Alright, those guys are way... Oh! Fucking hell. Jeezy Louisey. My god. So yeah, it just depends on what you're trying to do with your game, right? So like in, in a game like um, uh, 
uh, StarCraft. In multiplayer, the units, their real goal is to fulfill some sort of identity in the strategy. It's about its use with respect to the strategy. Does it do that well or does it do that poorly, you know? Or if we're looking at something like single-player StarCraft, you know, it's really more about how much fun it is to build a huge army and watch it kick ass. Ah, oh, fuck. And... Oh, shit. I think we lost quite a lot of souls. And so, you know, in a game like Halo or Uncharted or um, even Tomb Raider, they're, they're things that are interesting to look at. Oh, 3,000? Oh, that's not bad at all. So, I mean, the thing that I think is is different about what a game like Fallout 3 or the Dark Souls or Elden Ring would be doing with regards to the uh, environmental storytelling is that it's not actually clear what's happening in Dark Souls a lot of the time. I mean, if I think about those Halo games, the Halo games, man, those things just like... It's like, quickly, Captain, we, we have to get out of here before X, Y, Z thing happens, you know? Shh, you don't see me. And so it's much more action-y. So when you see something, it's just like, oh, that's really sweet. But in this game, there's lots and lots of mystery. And the environment can often help with that. It can hurt with that. It can enhance that. There's a lot more information being contained in the uh, storytelling, or me, the environmental storytelling of a game like Dark Souls Fallout. Oh, come on. I did the wrong attack. Sue me. I can just stealth kill everybody. Hello, gamers. I can't see you, man. Isolate them, we're okay. Holy shit, video game. <laughs> uh oh. We are kidding me, dude. In game. What? Where am I? Ah! Uh. Hey! Yeah! 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 Alright, come here, you shooty bastard. Do you have any summon ashes? I just don't think I'm going to use summon ashes in this game, man.
Hello. See if you can get the first swingy dingy off. It's pretty good. Wow, there's like a lot of area that I need to explore over here. I knew I was forgetting one. you come from? Look at my spacing. I'm such a sick cow. Alright, well, cleared the area again. Oh, Huck, Huck, I took that call today. I took that call today, Huck. It was great. It was great. The call went great. The Ash summons are fun to use, though. Yeah. Die real quick and do it over again. Yuck. Juga says, I'm honestly amazed at Sean's ability to focus on this and reply to chat. I die so frequently. Well, uh, the, the pacing of these games, it's, it's really, really good. Fuck. Because, like, in a moment right now, all I'm doing is wandering back, so I just take a moment to say some stuff. And also there's those things. Uh, there's also a, a component where, like, I know exactly what's happening coming forward, so I, like, don't really need to think right now. I know that there's another rat, maybe two down here. And then I'm going to wander through that little, uh, drop away place. <laughs> Sona 6 says, man, these rats are so dangerous, kill me more times than some of the nights. I know, this fucking game sometimes. My goodness. What has this? We need a death count. Uh, we have our hero, Velrun, who's been keeping track of all sorts of stats. Uh, Velrun, if you want to do a little copy pasta droppy, we would welcome it gladly. Place looks different in the day. Oh, is that just, like, an endless pit down there? Alright, well, you know. Agilio 3 says, did George R. R. Martin uh, contribute anything major? Kind of seems like a marketing move, really. I'm going to answer this question. I'm going to, once again, give a nod to Valorant. Valorant says, I've died 73 times. 25 to Margaret the Fell, 5 to the Flying Dragon, Ag Heel, 5 to the Mad Pumpkin Head. Really, did I die to him 5 times? Fuck. I'm going to answer this question, and then I'm going to briefly sprint to get some water, uh, and then come back. So, um, I think that writing sometimes is a little unclear when it comes to, um, 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 writing can seem a little unclear with regards to games, because it's like, in Dark Souls, is there really that much writing? Like, like, if you played the first Dark Souls, or if you've played Bloodborne, there's just not a lot of dialogue. There's just not a lot of stuff to say. And when I was way younger, like I'm talking like early 20s, and right now I'm in my late 80s. Um, this is my early 20s. 35. 36? 35. 35. Um, when I was in my early 20s, I was just like, oh yeah, it's just, it's just like the dialogue. You're just writing the dialogue, right? But the idea is... Almost every single thing in the game is connected to the lore, the story, the world. Let's use StarCraft as a great example. Let's use StarCraft as a great example. So, in StarCraft, the fact that one of the factions is an insect-like bug uh, race of beings. And you kind of have, like, the hive mind as a component in there. And you have um, some general sci-fi horror vibes from the Zerg. That's the identity of the Zerg. And from that emerges mechanics like creep. You can only build on creep because it's influenced from the 1986 brilliancy of aliens. Um, you have the idea of the Overlord is a unit that exerts control 
over the remaining units. So Zerg doesn't have farms, they have overlords, because it's connected to the hive mind. You have the, uh, you know, the idea of larvae that turn into eggs and eggs that then hatch, which is the fundamental production mechanic for Zerg. So in fact, all of these things that are core to how Zerg behave all point back to that initial lore design provided by the writers of StarCraft. Um, and so, you know, when you when you look at just this vista, like, look, th this is, there's a ton of things that are going on here connected to writing that don't involve words, but involve someone to have thought about this. Like, for instance, the clouds moving fast is cool. But in particular, it also feels like it fits with this world. I bet you there's an explanation to what's going on with the clouds. But let's even ignore the clouds. We have this Eld tree that's providing a look and a feel and is overlaying into the game. Look at the architecture of this castle. Why is the castle architected this way? Why do we even have people who are positioned in a way to defend the castle gates? Probably has to do with some event or some bit of the world that's going on. The people who are patrolling out in, in the open world area of Limgrave, who are they? Because they've all had the same outfits going on. Um, so they're probably part of some group and we want to motivate and explain why this group is patrolling in this particular area. And I'm noticing similarities between um, some of the people inside of the castle and some of the people outside of the castle. And hey, Margaret the Fell Omen has a look and a feel and a tone that in some ways contrasts with the world around him and in some ways connects to the world around him. Why? Why does it have those things? Why does it have those reasons? And this is something that, for instance, Miyazaki, the president of FromSoft, who basically created the Souls uh, franchise, um, 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 I mean, he talked about seeing early designs for monsters in Bloodborne. And he would see them and go, no, this is just a kind of weird, scary-looking monster. It has to be connected to the world. Make it more connected to the world. And so, you know, very early in Bloodborne, you see men turning into werewolves that are like half wolf, half human, and they're hunting for beasts. And it gives you the impression that these people are hunting some outside threat of beasts, but it's actually not outside, it's inside. They're the ones that are turning into it. So maybe the beasts that they've been killing are their... Um, peers who have been who have succumbed to this bizarre curse and as it turns out this is the sort of um canvas for the entire story to emerge from so my understanding of george r r martin with respect to this world is that george r r martin developed the entire world and the lore and did all of it and then from software receives it and then they start making things so you can imagine again if i designed the zerg in starcraft and then i handed it to blizzard in you know the mid 90s and said okay turn this into an rts game and then you can imagine if i gave the zerg to fromsoft how they would interpret that but also how they would rely on that how you'd see areas covered in creep how you'd have beings who were weird and twisted and mauled because they're experiencing forced evolution you know in some weird way you'd have um you know the idea of the hive mind control might be less emphasized if fromsoft were doing it but it would still probably be there in some regard. And I think that this is something that's like super important to um, point to. Because I mean like literally when we were working on the adventure, which is a text-based thing, which had lots of literal dialogue writing. Oh shit. I hit the wrong button. Even before we came up with the literal text, we had to come up with some just general world lore that we were pretty sure that we were gonna stick with in the adventure. And then we had to just constantly um, work from there and adjust and tune and tune and adjust. And make sure that we could actually get everything to, to sensibly fit from just a really basic like, huh, like, Okay, let's create a town that has these types of tones, these types of feelings in there, because... We need to make sure we have some way to double-check and test our own engine. Don't forget your water. Oh, my God, thank you. Anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, let me, let me just get that real fast. Do I need coffee, too? Nah, I think I'm pretty good on coffee. Cool, wait, keeping everyone healthy. Let's get, let's get two pills. 
Lava says, for me, this game's still a 5 out of 10, but I'm fighting the first boss still. When you say the first boss, which, which first boss are you referring to? Because I've heard some people describe Target the Fell as the first boss. <laughs> Noble Princeps gifted sub to Kuwe. Shit. There's the bonfire right there, huh? That's literally the bonfire. Huh. Galato says the one before the castle, if I recall correctly. Um, ah, you fuckers. Oh, fuck! Way harder than it needed to be. Fuck, 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 fuck. fuck. I'm going to touch this. I'm not going to use this. This is where my guy's at. What up? Oh, hello. Glad to see you safe. I've come into some fine goods. Only it turns out yeah, Colado. I can't use one of them. Perhaps you'd like to take them off my hands. Perhaps indeed. Of course, I understand. When you approach the gates, I'll signal them to open. It's only your neck on the line after all. Oh, oh. well, huh. Oh, hello. A lot of I have a follow-up. Uh, Dark House is wait, he sells items. Yep. This is the game. This is how the game works. Depending upon when you speak to and interact with certain NPCs, you will get different results. So, um, Kalato, I will note that when I first played Dark Souls 1, I did not like it. Actually, the first, like, three times I tried it. Then Dark Souls 2, I was like, oh, I guess these games are popular. I may as well try to make myself do it again. And then, like, I finally started to actually make progress, and I finally started to actually get places. And at some point, I was just like, all right, I literally need to spend every waking hour playing through and exploring this game. This game is perfect. And then I went back to Dark Souls 1, and then I enjoyed Dark Souls 1. So, you know, th there there is, again, like a certain clicking of the of the pacing of how you go through these games that is is very easy to bounce off. And the way I've described it before is that there's a certain mental model that you need of how these games work before you can truly enjoy them. Shh, you cannot see me. You do 
not know the time here. Um, he has a certain mental model that I think that you need um, to wrap your head around. And, and like to like really wrap your head around. And the example I keep using is that in StarCraft, it's not clear once you learn the mechanics that it's actually kind of a rhythm game. Like, you should never stop building SCVs out of that command center. Holy shit, there's a huge monster here. I'm invisible. No one can see me at all. Do these trigger something if I walk through? Would not have been surprised if they just went shonk. I'm over here now? No way. Insane. Alright. Oh, this is ridiculous. I can't believe I made it over here. I'm actually gonna rest. Huh. All right. Super sick. Yeah. Um. I'm um, um, um. Yeah. In, in in StarCraft, it's not clear that you need to never stop building SCVs. It's not clear that whenever you make a production structure, it should be active nonstop. And once you learn that, you suddenly have to spend some time practicing that. Not as in the get used to your fingers doing it uh, deftly, but getting used to your brain not thinking about, ooh, what should I do next? In fact, if you just say, hey, build a barracks and then expand. If you know that you should never stop building SCVs, never stop building depots, never stop having stuff come out of your barracks, you automatically have solved the first several minutes of the game. So you don't need to think about that. You just need to think constantly about the build stuff, build the stuff, build the stuff, build the stuff. You get to constantly think about this upkeep. Uh, so let's level up. I don't have enough to use inventory items, huh? And I feel like in the in the Souls games, I, I want to stress from this example, it's not nearly. Uh, it's not merely that you need to learn what the mental model is. It's that you need to really digest it and sit with it. And I think that that's one of the real achievements, but also the real difficulties of these Souls games, is that these Souls games kind of have this... You need to learn the mental model, which is kind of how combat flows, how to engage things, what the rewards are. You know, the rewards are not about getting more loot. The rewards are not about... Oh, I'm going to use everything. Actually, that might just be perfect. Let's do this. Keep upgrading strength. Versus the model is is get good, right? It's not really. It's 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 like, okay, when you're playing, you are are trying to watch very carefully what your enemies are doing and wait for the right time to strike once. And it's okay to wait for a long time for that to happen, because the the, the more deliberate and careful you are farther you'll go when you need to go far, so you need to really master each individual thing, and here's how to master it. And, like, it is very satisfying to observe with intensity the animations of an individual character, and then see, there's my window, and then crush it, and then the next time you encounter them, you just annihilate and go through, and you get that feeling of, yeah, achievement. If you were not staggered by enemy attacks, enemies didn't deal a lot of damage, you dealt a ton of damage, you would never get that feeling of triumph. ay 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 I actually want to see something really fast. And so it's actually quite difficult to, like, understand that that is what's happening when you first sit down to play the game, because the game appears to have all the same things as other action RPGs. Uh-oh. Is this a boss? This looks very bossy. Bolt Drake Talisman. Uh-oh. Well, I, I 
think maybe lightning's coming up. Huh. This is what I mean by environmental story t storm blah, environmental storytelling. You see just these giant monster remains, or is, are they armor remains? No fucking way. Like, if you were playing Diablo 3 as your last ARPG, and then you encountered one of these guys... shoots me at this. Rapo? Holy shit. Yeah, give me the fuck out of here. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, fucking awesome. Oh my god, this is so sick. How'd you fit that bow in your pocket? Um, well, you know, I'm pretty big pockets over here, if I'm being honest. It's tightly blocked shut. Not unlike my pockets. Shadowcast TV gifted us five and said, wanted you to know. <laughs> this is, I wanted you to know. I was dying uh, laughing yesterday as you were using the crossbow and not realizing you could lock on with it. Yeah, that was that was quite a twist, I feel like, in the storytelling of the game. Yeah, we are dead. The number of times I have watched someone play Dark Souls 1, 2, 3, Bloodborne and gone, wait, where the fuck is this? Like, did you know that I Dark Souls 1, favorite game of all time, single player at least, I did not ever wander through the Valley of Drakes. Huh. So this is some place off the map here. Yeah, I never went through the Valley of Drakes. Never did I ever. Oh, shit. No! Fuck! Stormhawk Feather. Excuse me, guys.
I'm Unix because I didn't find the secret parts of Darkroot Garden with the fake tree monsters until like my fourth play route through. Yeah. Rickus Grimes says, I'm level 53 and you've already been in three places I didn't find. Yeah, no, this. Beds. Yamodal says Dark Souls 1 is a serious masterclass in level design. Also my favorite game of all time. God, it's so good. I do feel like Dark Souls 1 needs a little bit more guidance at the start for players. As in, I think it makes the game better when you say, hey, okay, when you start off, go up the aqueduct. It's that thing. All right, so I, I got to explore all this area up here. This is so epic. Yeah, I mean, th this game, frankly, addresses a lot of the concerns I have with open world games, which is like, I don't want it to be that fucking open. I don't want to try to come up with a to-do list of things I need to take care of. That's what I do at work all day. I want you to be like, here's level one, play it. You know, great. I'll, I'll go and play it. Dark Souls is the first time in Dark Souls 1 I was stuck in the graveyard for the first two hours. Yeah, it's, it's a few things like that where I'm like, dude, just make the player clearly know that they should go this way maybe a little bit harder. You know, for instance, if you entered the, the graveyard and you immediately just, like, detonated... Oh, wait, where's the... Where's the teleporter? Was it... Is this shit one way? Is this shit fucking one way? Are you kidding me? Alright, so I guess... I think I'd just go back here. So I want to see if all my babies are back. Actually, let me. I have enough to. Dude, I hate that. Like the 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 button for help. You hit map and then you hit it again and it opens this. I have to hit this and hit a different button to turn this off. Fucking sucks. No, not this at all. You know, I think that th there's an argument to be made. That, dude, the Dark Souls actually has this. Dark Souls actually has, at the start of that game, a huge get the hell out of the graveyard. Because if you go there, when you kill enemies, they literally come back to life. Sturdex. Uh, hello, I'm Sturdex. And then when you go to the um, Nulando ruins, you literally can't deal damage because there's ghosts. I want to see if all three of them come back. I'm going to try to fight these guys. It's okay, I've played these games before. It's okay, it's all fine, it's all fine. 
So I think what I do is I let these two fuck faces mess with each other. And then once they're done messing with each other, I run to the back and I pick off the other guy. By the way, Dark Hollow, Dark Hollow, please don't explain to me how to overcome things that I'm in the middle of overcoming. Please, please, please. I encourage everyone to not spoil me. Hey, this this is how you beat this guy, and this is how this thing goes on. Because there's going to be a lot of things where I'm like, hmm, I wonder if they have some sort of weak point. And if you just are like, oh, the weak point's here, you've taken away the fun gameplay of having the question. You like that jump, though? You like that fucking sick jump? Oh my god, it goes through that? One of these guys would not actually be that bad to defeat. And dude, I just love that the Souls games do this. Oh yeah, you ripped it back. I forgot. I forgot. It's my bad. stuck here. Oh, he might actually just fit right through there. Fuck. All right. This feels a lot like having a cat. I'm looking at them, they're looking at me. We're just looking at each other. You know, let's just go ahead and take a little drink of water here. Have you ever loved your pet so much you just look at them? This is nice, this is a nice thing. Fuck, fuck you, fucking hate my pets. chippy. I'll have a little chippy over here. A little dippy and a little chippy. Hmm. 
powerful quack lord. It says, put the chip on the dip. Uh, no back seating with my eating, please. Because I want to experience the struggle of getting the tasty dip in my mouth as is. I mean, why, why ruin all the fun? Like, I love that these games create enemies like this that feel impossible. And then you play against it a little bit and you go, oh. I actually designed this so I could beat it. Scared the shit out of me. This is so sweet, I can't tell you. Hurt each other, hurt each other. Well, now I know why this entire walkway is just littered with giant corpses. We're doing it. The roll timing is actually like really not hard for a Souls game. Because you see them with their backswing. Give me a little 187 of my damage. See him swinging in. Oh, I didn't see that one. <laughs> um, how much health does this guy have? Right now? Where are you? Dong. gonna stare at him. He's gonna stare at me. Dude, the other one's just continuously getting bolted. <laughs> of you who are curious, if you touch the bonfire, it just immediately disappears him. Alright, here we go! We're heading back! No, we're not! Alright. Oh, shit, he's pissed. Alright. Gong! See, here's the type of environmental music that I really want, right? I love this rain... the other one? No, it's the same one. I think I might actually have to do some fighting here. What if I stop moving? get over into that corner. You know what? I'm thirsty. Oh. Hi. Hi, beautiful. <laughs> this guy in the background, he's like, still getting shot from the bolter. Oh, yeah. Bong. Alright, let me just take a sip.
so then. List of bolts. All right. So how do these controls work again? So let's do this. And then I hold this. Ah, fuck. How do, you, how do I go two-handed again? Content. So then I... guy has some souls, let me tell you. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, fuck yeah, holy shit. Yes, fuck yeah. Oh, ho, 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 ho. oh, day nine, the gamer. He's what you watch day nine, he's a fuck gamer. Shoot her. interested in what you're interested in. 36 strength. So if I do this... Alright. Look at my jumping fucking attack! <laughs> uh, oh, long sword times too. video game. I know you. I know you, video game. I understand how this game works. 
Soft cotton. That not is not an exciting thing to find. Well, Alright, let's keep... platforming in my FromSoft games? It's more likely than you think. <laughs> Mediocre platforming in a Souls game? It's exactly what you'd expect. Oh, shit. <laughs> Get on here. God, this is... the most immersive open-world experience for in a generation. Oh, I'm so sick. I'm so good. Don't lose those souls now, Gulanga. That's all we intend on doing. Alright, let's... Yeah, mountain pack climbing on a horse in Skyrim. Oh, hey, what's up here? I wonder what's... Ah! Fucking throw yourself all the way back down to the bottom of the mountain. And then you wake up in jail. And Todd Howard's like, oh, it's the perfect ending. Putting characters in jail is, is, that's the Todd Howard move. That's the move. But what if, when the player made a decision, where, of course, invariably, I recognize they're going to reload, but before they reload, they're in a jail? Hmm? Thoughts? Thoughts on this? Think about it. Just think on it. Noodle on it. Crimbo Slice 420. Speaking of losing souls, any tips on getting over a broken heart from Felicity? Sean, Crimbo. Crimbo. It's gonna be okay. We've actually talked about breakups. I th think very recently, actually. I think we were actually playing a third-person open-world action game. As a matter of fact. Oh, can't horse it here. So, here's the first thing I want you to do, Crimbo. You're feeling a little down, you're feeling a little upset. It's okay to cry, Crimbo, man. It's okay to just feel sad and feel bad. And the explanation that I gave last time, we're going to give again here to a new audience of gamers. We're going to get to the top of the stairwell. Talk a little bit about getting over it. Not with Ben and Fadi, but with your pal Day9. All right. Who's, who's, who's ever been dumped and been devastated? Or turned down and devastated and all that stuff. Oh my god, they're too good in this game. They're just too good. Alright, yep. 1-1. One, one. Alright. Here's what I want you to think about, Crimbo Slice. Okay? I think one of the biggest understandings and revelations and areas of research and advancements of society that is happening right now, especially in the last few years, is understanding identity. Who am I? And I think that when you're in a relationship it's very easy for your identity to start to get intertwined with the other person in a way. And I don't want to make a value judgment about whether that's a good thing or whether that's a bad thing. I just want to note that it can happen. Not just in terms of routine, like, oh, every Wednesday night is date night. Oh, we always watch Breaking Bad on Sundays together, right? Like, more than just these routines, you can start to feel a little bit like when you think about who you are, I... I am a husband. I am that. You know, like in the same way that I was talking about last night, I play card games, but I am an RTS player. There's these things that feel a little closer to your soul and a little closer to who you are. If someone says, Magic the Gathering sucks as a game, I'm like, all right, like, I, f I feel like nothing. I'm like, all right, yeah, no, it's not for everyone. If someone's like, Starcraft is a poorly designed game, I'll behave reasonably, but inside I'm like, what that? no, it's not. Oh, you're saying I, what I spent all my time doing is not reasonable? The game is, like, so good. The game is so well made. You know, like, I get all these fucking things in there. And I think that a big part that makes a breakup really hard is not just that maybe feeling of self-judgment that emerges. Like, oh, my God, was it me? Oh, my God, I lost this person, etc. It has a lot to do with a loss of identity and a loss of routine. So... 
first big bit of advice I'll give you, if you have a really bad breakup, or hell, maybe even if you just lose your job, you're going through a really tough time. Um, I want you to spend some time returning to yourself. Big emphasis on the word return. If you had a pie chart of who you are, who your identity is, maybe 70% of it was tied to that relationship, there's now a gap, and it must be filled. And what better thing to fill it with than with your favorite movie? Your favorite TV shows, your favorite games, your favorite foods, man. Oh, 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 oh. Every time that I've had a breakup or had a really traumatic event that really hurt me a lot, I found that I was returning not to play hardcore competitive one-on-one -on -one StarCraft, but to just watch the pro scene, stay up late watching it, playing some 4v4 big game hunters. I'd go get some of my favorite foods and beverages. I would re-watch... Or actually, I would replay through Castlevania Symphony of the Night. <laughs> I would watch some of my favorite shows. I've seen Jericho a number of times as a result. Things like this, that I actually start to feel a little bit more of a sense of, of me. Like, oh, things suck, but oh, this shit's all awesome. I remember who I am a little bit. It's, it's, it's good. I also think it's good to take some of that gap and fill it in with some of your own activities. Maybe Wednesday night was date night, but now maybe it's Wednesday night classic sci-fi movie night, right? Oh, shit. I have always wanted to watch 2001 A Space Odyssey and, you know, um, uh, what the hell is that Arnold Schwarzenegger name? Uh, what, what's the name of that movie that Arnold Schwarzenegger won on Mars? Um, Total Recall. Yeah, I'm early and shit in, like, going and checking out Total Recall. You know, like, thank you, everyone. Thank you for filling it in. <laughs> but Donk Donk says, Logan's run. I love it. Yeah, maybe you've been interested in those. And finally, you set aside some time to do something that you're interested in in this way. Maybe there is even something that feels a little bit like you could never do it in your relationship, but you can do it now. Like, for instance, um, I like staying up late. I really like that. And, man, there's times when... That's going to wake up the person I'm with if I do that. So if they're out of town, oh my gosh, I'm going to stay up late. Woo, it's really awesome. CC, we're going to go on walks at five in the morning. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. Things like that. Maybe you investigate how some of that might feel for you. Just take some time returning to who you are and who you enjoy. Or who you are and what you enjoy. I also think it's totally fine and recommended, and I encourage you, to lean on your friends, man. You know, I, I have some really lovely friends who, if they're going through hard times, oh, I'm real supportive, I check in and message, hey, are you doing okay, how are things going, etc. Be that person to your friends a little bit. Oh, I'm having the worst day ever, I feel horrible, oh god. I'm never gonna feel good ever again. Holy shit. Can you believe I just strolled right past this dog earlier? Oh, I thought it was good. Holy fuck, are we serious? This guy does not actually have that many movesets. said, dude, let's have trees fall over. Really? I think the counter hits are really bad here. I think I should just be rolling. Okay. Okay, he has a counter. Alright.
up here. Is this the cat of the day? Is this Sultan of Sleep? This is my baby cat. This is Sheriff. Alright. <laughs> Marskal says my cat at 3 a.m. <laughs> oh my god, right? My spacing's a little off. SC says, Dan, have you ever had slash wanted a dog? I have a dog. I have a little dog by the name of Cece. Little as in she's 70 pounds and always wants attention, always. How's Bone Eyes doing? Yeah, her name is Cece, but we call her Old Bone Eyes. She's doing good. She's my little sweetie pie. What, is, what does that symbol mean that's on the left side of the screen? What's that little... Ah, uh, summons, that's right, summons. So let's continue to make our way into Stormvale Castle. This is... This is the other side. This is the other side. I see. Oh, fucking jump. little guys just suddenly fucking jump up. Oh, you little piece! Oh! Yeah, so I think that this leads back up to... No one can see me. Oh, I always do that wrong. You know what? I'm brave. And I'm back in the safety of my little hut. Alright, let's go ahead and, uh... Let's go ahead and go to our equipment. Let's go ahead and take out... Take out one of these things, and let's go ahead and... Alright, so then we're gonna... We're gonna hit this button, and we're gonna...
Oh my god, how do you equip different bolts? How does this game work? Uh... Oh, God. What the fuck? R1 fires one type of bolt, R2 fires the other, but how, how do I, how do I load the bolts? and bolts. Okay, so. Oh, shit. So, wait, hold on. I do this, and I hit this button. So, now I'm holding this out. Can shoot you. Oh, I see. Fuck. Oh, so so the R buttons load. This guy fucking this guy sucks. All right. Are we serious with this shit? Gotcha. I feel so stupid right now. I look like such an idiot. God. Come here. Oh my god. Can we face the right direction, please? Can I cheese this? You're kidding. Hydrasil just gifted us five. Hey, thanks, Hydrasil. I'm having a tough time, Hydrasil. You're coming at me at a really vulnerable time in my life. Dude, I'm cheesing him. And he's gonna swing back unless I back away. This is, this is really good. Whoopsie dupsie. He's, he's learning that I'm trying to chase him. He's learning. He's, he, he, he's, he's, he's amping up. Have enough for one swing. Oh, I 
can't get two swings in. We're gonna get a right swing. I'm not gonna do it. 